हरे कृष्णा क्वेश्चन वाई डिड द्रोणा आस्क फॉर द फिंगर ऑफ एक लव्य आंसर दिस इज अ डिफिकल्ट सब्जेक्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड इट इज वेरी इजी टू पास स्नैप जजमेंट सेइंग दैट यू नो द्रोणा द्रोणा रूइंड द करियर ऑफ एक लव्य बाय आस्किंग फॉर इज थम बट थिंग्स आर नॉट एज सिंपल एज दैट यस at one level the incident where the eklavya gave his thumb to uh, drona it just uh, it does definitely indicate eklavya's dedication to his guru wherein eklavya wanted to do something wonderful for uh, his um, for uh, uh, as dakshina for his guru although he had learned only indirectly from him but let's look at the full incident at that time Eklavya was a part of the uh, Nishadha tribes, and not just. And this tribe was known known to be uh, made of anti-social elements, who would often disrupt society. So they were uh, constant trouble. They used to sometimes plunder the pilgrims and travelers who would go through the forests, and they were a constant source of trouble for the Kuru dynasty rulers, and. that's why when uh, eklavya came to uh, came to drona to learn from drona drona said no uh, i cannot teach you so now externally it is said that he gave him the reason that you are not a kshatriya so i cannot teach you but kshatriya is not just a matter of birth it's also a matter of mentality and mentality means two aspects there is the character and there is the competence so character uh, so for example now uh, a doctor somebody is a surgeon may have the competence to to cut the body very efficiently and do and remove whatever uh, to harmful part is there in the body to fix up whatever is wrong but if that doctor doesn't have character that surgeon doesn't have character then they may well actually uh, do some mess in the body maybe steal organ or steal a part of the organ or basically Uh, show as if far more expenditure is required on the surgery than what is actually required and they may do the job well but they may exploit the patient far more than what is what is uh, f- exploit the patient unnecessarily uh, excessively so then for a person uh, to actually do a job well both the character and the competence are essential so eklavya he definitely had the competence he did develop the the remarkable archery skills but then unfortunately he did not use the archery skills very well so when drona refused to teach him now he learned in two ways one is that he made a effigy of drona and he would uh, offer his respects to that effigy and practice whatever he had learned whatever he could understand and sometimes he would go to drona's academy also and uh, stay on the outskirts stay in the trees and there observe what drona was teaching the students and try to learn from that but either way he had that mood that drona is my teacher and thus he learned and he became expert now all this to his to his credit his eagerness to learn his zeal in uh, applying himself to the learning of the skill all that is good but unfortunately later on when the pandavas when arjuna and drona were walking through the forest at that time they suddenly saw a dog and the dog's mouth had been stitched up so now at one level this was a remarkable feat of archery at another level it was uh, it is quite barbaric you know, a dog is uh, it's usually not a very dangerous animal unless it's like a doberman or something like that and unless a dog has done something malevolent Uh, to stitch up the mouth of a dog so the dog is not also also not able to bark it's it's quite a cruel thing to do so what is the solution so th- so arjuna looked at this and arjuna said who has done this and then as they went forward they saw that uh, here there was this uh, person who was actually practicing archery and who who you turned out he was eklavya so eklavya had been practicing archery and a dog had been barking nearby so he had got irritated with the dog's barking and just he had shot arrows to silence the dog but in silencing the dog he had just completely sealed up its mouth and the dog had been reduced to a state of pitiable helplessness 
So now, uh, at that time, Ekla Vyamisa Drona, he came and offered obeisances to him and he said, you are my guru. And then Drona looked and immediately recognized, oh, Ekla Vyamisa was the same person who had come and tried to learn from him and that learning he had refused. He had, he had refused to teach him. So then he intuited, he, he figured out what must have happened and then he thought, you know, a such a person who is, who, who has, who takes some joy in, uh, in victimizing the helpless, where a helpless dog is being just sewn up by him. You know, if he gets this formidable archery skills, then he can become, he can create quite a big havoc in society. He can break havoc. Just like today, we have concerns that sometimes if some some countries which are ruled by hot-headed tyrants, say terrorist states or some states which are very much influenced by terrorism and the leaders are themselves quite hot-headed, if such countries get nuclear weapons, then they can break a great havoc in the world. And that's why it's a matter of great responsibility that uh, who can have nuclear weapons? Now, this is there can of course be certain level of privileging and certain level of discrimination in this. But overall, the point is that you cannot have. There has to be some level of uh, discernment in who can be given extremely powerful weapons. So archery was a, at that time an extremely powerful and dangerous skill, and to have it in the hands of a person who was liable to use it against the ruling powers, who was liable to use it against uh, defenseless victims, that would have been dangerous. And that's why at that time Drona asked him. So the reason that is often advanced is Drona said Drona wanted Arjuna to become his best, become the best archer in the world. He wanted his student Arjuna to become the best archer in the world. And in order to ensure that Eklavya would not challenge him for that position, Drona asked Eklavya for his finger. Now that's only, a, that's, that can, can be one part of the reason, but that's not the primary reason. The primary, the, if Drona was simply such a such a ego hungry kind of person who wanted the prestige of having the greatest archer as a student, then Eklavi was already ready to say that he was a student of Drona. So Drona could have got that credit even through him. And we see that Drona was so broad minded in terms of giving knowledge to everyone that he was ready to even educate Dushyadyumna. Dushyadyumna was a person who had who had been born through the fire uh, which in the yagya that was performed by Drupada for the explicit purpose of causing the death of Drona. So Drona was so broad minded that as a Brahmin he was ready to give knowledge even to a person who was going to kill him. who was born specifically ordained for his death. So it was not that Drona was a petty minded person. He was very broad minded and we have to see the subtler things that are going on over here. So Drona wanted to protect Eklavya himself from doing a bad karma because the person with a formidable power, if that person abuses whatever power they have, then they can often cause a lot of harm to uh, themselves by doing bad karma. And then they will have to bear the consequences. So to protect society from his, uh, from any antisocial uh, influences, caused by his powerful archery skills and to protect himself from also doing some serious bad karma. What uh, Eklavya, what Drona told Eklavya is, give me your thumb as Guru Dakshina. Now definitely it's to his credit that Eklavya gave him the thumb. But at the same time, if Eklavya was such an obedient student, then the first time when Drona forbade him from learning archery, saying that I will not teach him, at that time he could just have accepted that and he could have looked for some other vocation. And when he did not do that, uh, then he basically, it is selective obedience may always not be obedience. So when he obeyed one instruction, that is glorious. But if he had obeyed the earlier instruction, then a whole lot of trouble could have been avoided. And eventually, um, what happened is that Eklavya joined a rank of demons. And the demons were, he was a part of the uh, demoniac army of Jarasandha. And uh, he joined, uh, basically he joined uh, uh, various uh, uh, demoniac ranks and eventually it was Krishna who in a fight killed Eklavya. So that's how actually Eklavya met his death. So Eklavya is often uh, uh, seen as a model of Guru Bhakti 
but the important point to think is to recognize is that uh, he was actually uh, his guru bhakti was not as deep as it could have been and what his guru did for him was for his ultimate good thank you hare krishna